RFA was going to win the race amongst new European launchers until its rocket exploded yesterday. This is obviously a setback, probably a pretty big setback. I would doubt that they launched this year after planning to have launched last year. So this is quite a setback for the company that was in the lead to launch the first amongst new European launchers and the first from the new spaceport in Scotland. The news came out yesterday that Rocket Factory Augsburg, that's RFA, that their new rocket RFA-1 that was scheduled to launch sometime the next few weeks. It had an explosion on the pad for a static fire. The only video footage I could find was from the BBC's. I feel like I should be telling you this with a British accent, but sorry, you all get my mid-Atlantic American accent. So this wasn't even a launch attempt. It was a static fire. My heart really goes out to them. They were so close. They were so close. They had planned a launch within weeks. At the end of last year, they said that they were aiming for summer of this year. Here we are mid-August. So they were, they were getting towards the end of summer here, but they still had a little bit of time. They were planning to launch within weeks and boom, it's gone. So we don't know exactly what happened yet, but they were doing a test fire in preparation for launch. And this was specifically their first stage. It has nine engines. As RFA-1 is a three-stage rocket. That first stage is what they were testing, which they tested three months ago back in May. They had a hot fire back in May. They tested four Helix engines. Those are their own engines. And it worked perfectly. They had some more test firing campaigns. In July, they test fired the third stage, a full duration burn of their third stage, and everything seemed to be coming together. And one thing I love about RFA is they have such an optimistic attitude. They really were putting out there an air of positivity. And so I was really excited for them. They are a six-year-old company founded in August of 2018. A six-year development phase, I mean, that's pretty reasonable for a new rocket with new engines. RFA was planning to launch the new Saxavord space port. Saxavord just got its launch license back in December. They have permission from the Civil Aviation Authority to launch up to 30 times per year. And there are a number of launch companies that are planning to launch from there. I'll go over that later. This hot fire test, that was at Saxavord. And thankfully, the pad is intact. It looks like there was a little bit of damage to the mount, but everything, at least on the spaceport side, the pad side, seems to be intact. So if they can determine the reason for the anomaly and rebuild that first stage, because this was a flight first stage, not a test first stage. If they can rebuild it all, they could probably launch fairly quickly, but I would not count on that happening this year. It does mean though that the spaceport is open for others who want to attempt to launch, and I'll go over that later. It is fairly uncommon for a new launch vehicle to launch perfectly the first time, but this wasn't even a launch. And that's what's killer here, is that they didn't even get to the point of actually trying to launch this rocket. So they, they got almost to the finish line here. They almost got their rocket to the launch pad to attempt to launch, but then this hot fire, this static fire, it did not work according to plan. According to the release that they put out yesterday, on Monday evening, RFA conducted a hot fire of its first stage at the launch site at Saxaboard Spaceport. This resulted in an anomaly that led to the loss of the stage. And then they go on to say, we develop iteratively with an emphasis on real testing. This is part of our philosophy and we were aware of the higher risks attached to this approach. Our goal is to return to regular operations as soon as possible. So here I wanna do point out a difference in philosophy. There is a philosophy of modeling and simulation and making sure absolutely everything is perfect, tested so well ahead of time that by the time the rocket gets to the launch site, the company is confident that everything is going to go well because they tested so much previously. Whereas there's another philosophy that you just try things and you iterate. You test as you go and you don't get to attach the hardware because the hardware is just part of the testing process. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it, it's the philosophy of SpaceX, for example, where yes, of course, they don't want the SpaceX rockets to blow up, but they are okay with during the test launch phases of things going off nominal. And that seems to be the philosophy that RFA is talking about here. However, RFA is not, of course, as well-funded as SpaceX or some of the other companies. Last year, they raised a 30 million euro investment round from KRR. And last year, the UK Space Agency actually funded this company, even though it's a German company. They funded them 3.5 million euros or roughly $4.3 million for RFI to prepare to launch out of Saxaboard, which is in Scotland, in the UK. So hopefully with the funding that they have, they are able to turn things around, get back on their feet and get to the point where they can get to the launch pad and try to launch RFA-1. 
I wish them the best of luck, but they do have competitors, several competitors, in fact. I'm not going to dig too much in the details here about each of these companies, but there's High Impulse, which is in Germany as well. Is our Aerospace also in Germany? PLD Space in Spain, Orbex in Scotland, Skyrora in Scotland, Latitude in France, and Maya Space in France, which has Arion Space connections, or is it Arion Group? And those are probably not all of them. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing any of the new launch companies that are in Europe that are developing that are realistic. <laughs> now, I should point out that RFA1 is a small launcher, and that is one of the things that differentiates it between, let's say, Arion 6. These are smaller companies that are developing smaller launches to try to kickstart a launch marketplace in Europe, because Europe at one point was actually a leader in launch, and then that leadership got taken away by SpaceX slowly over time. And so now Europe is definitely like a third tier player, I would say. You've got the United States with SpaceX at the top here and, and all other US launchers kind of just trailing. And then you've got China and the plethora of Chinese launch companies, as well as government run launchers. Once upon a time, Russia would have been up there, but not anymore. Russia has not really launched much at all this year. They've lost a lot of market share. So right now, third in third place, I would say is Europe and Europe as a whole, not even one specific country. So what I see in Europe is so much potential. When I visited ESA in Paris last year, there was just this pent up desire to see Europe do more than it is currently doing, to see it really take its own, you know, not have to rely on foreign companies, foreign launchers to really stand up sovereign companies, not just Arion Group, Arion Space and Vega, not just the traditional ones, but newcomers and have that revolution that really shook things up in the United States, for example. And that's what I see RFA as part of. I see it as part of this trend, this wave of small European companies, not just launchers, but there's satellite companies and computing companies and earth observation companies, just this collection of European companies that are small, but could become bigger. They have so much potential to do more. I'm rooting for them, but you know, launch is hard. Hard, especially when it's a brand new rocket, a brand new engine. Is RFA going to succeed? Well, I certainly hope so. Nothing is guaranteed though. So I would love to see RFA try again in sometime in the next few months, maybe early 2025, as well as some of these other launch companies starting to launch. I think Izar Aerospace was actually aiming for late this year to do their first launch attempt. Most of these other companies are aiming for 2025 or later, but I would love to see more and more of this activity out of the UK. There of course are American companies that want to launch out of Europe as well. But I too want to see European companies succeed. Some of my clients have been European and I know that if there was more activity happening within Europe, there'd be more funding, there'd be more investment and it's just a, a cycle. And so what we need to see is some more success along with the investment and really accelerate that cycle of success. And speaking of Ariane 6, if you are curious to know how it stands competitively amongst other larger launchers and whether or not there are customers for Ariane 6, I have a video on that. Check that out next.